Hey everybody, welcome back to Dad Does Videos. Today we are going to paint a walk-in closet with wire racks in it. You can see it straight ahead here. I just wanted to give you some context as we walk in. We painted this room about a year ago. You can see it's a gray right here and kind of a, a teal over there. We're gonna paint the closet gray to blend in with this wall. Uh, it's kind of a, <laughs> almost a neon greenish right now but closets are kind of tricky because oftentimes they have these wire racks in them so if you're not accustomed to doing this it could prevent a little bit of a an issue but it's not that big of a deal it takes a little bit of patience so first step is we are just going to pop these wire racks out so there are two types of wire racks that you'll typically encounter in closets it's one like this where uh, these holders are on the wall, these little brackets, and then these little arms pop up to keep this in place. And this, they're both easy to pop out for the, the time being when you need to paint. All you need to do is kind of put a little force and these just pop right out. What we're gonna do is just leave these on. You can take these off. Um, but I worry sometimes about taking the screw out and then putting it back in and the screw doesn't hold as much as before. So we can just paint around these. And then the second type of shelf that you're going to encounter is something similar, but it doesn't have the arms that pop out. They're just little spots for these to rest in. So you do it the same way and there's nothing holding these in. As you can see, I can just, I can just lift this up right now, but all you do is the same thing with a little force behind it and pop them out. So we're gonna get the rest of these down and we'll show you what to do next. Okay, the next step is just to prepare your surfaces for the painter's tape we're gonna use. I really think it's a good idea to use painter's tape. It really keeps your, your edges nice and sharp. It does take a little bit of extra time, but it's worth it in the long run. Uh, especially for closets, you're going to find, uh, hopefully you can see it here, there's a lot of, of dust buildup. And if you don't wipe this down, your painter's tape is not going to stick that well and you're going to get runs underneath it. So just get a rag and go around your baseboards, wipe everything down. And it's not a bad idea to do the same thing around the top. Uh, we're going to put some painter's tape around the ceiling and around some of the uh, the molding here around the doorway. Okay, so we've moved on to taping. This is the brand that I like to use. There's a, a blue 3M brand that a lot of people use. I think the frog tape does a much better job. So I invite you to figure out which one works better for you, but I would go with this one. Anyway, as you can see, we've started putting the tape up on the ceiling. You need to be pretty precise. You don't want to have some jagged lines where the paint goes in and out all over the place. So as you can see here, I went right along the ceiling but left a little bit of white space because we want to cover all the green that used to be there before. We don't want to see any of that, but we don't want to put the tape too far away so that it starts to cover the ceiling. So it's a really thin line that you'll want to make. And we're going to go all the way around and then we're gonna capture and go all the way around the casing of the door. And then like I mentioned before, the, uh, the molding on the bottom. All right, everybody, as you can see, we're all taped up here along the ceiling, around the molding on the door and along the molding on the, uh, the floor. So one thing I would suggest before starting to paint is just to double check and run your, your finger along the tape all along just to make sure everything's stuck down. There aren't like little gaps that your, your paint might leak through. So that's just a, a little tip that I've picked up along the way. And that shouldn't take you too long just to, uh, to go around and just double check that. So I'm gonna do that and then we are going to start to paint. As you can see here, I have my utensils on the floor. We have a couple different size rollers here. There's a four inch one and a six inch one. 
I've got a, uh, a brush that I'm going to use to paint along on the corners just because it's easier to get in there. And then I'm going to use this half inch little brush to get around uh, the, the equipment for the, the shelving. And we might get a little paint on those, but that's not a big deal. I just didn't want it slobbered all over there. So right now, we're ready to get started painting. So what I like to do is start up somewhere on a corner and use the trim brush to capture a corner and go down and across the ceiling and start to work your sa yourself down. Now I will break out the roller after I finish going all the way across the top there on the right and down the corner a little bit and then just repeat the process all the way until the bottom. Okay, so we're finished with the first coat. And regardless of whether you think that's good enough, you're gonna wanna put on a second coat because there are going to be spots that where you can see the old color still coming through. For instance, you can see a little green right behind here and there are going to be other spots randomly throughout that even though as you're over as you're looking at it you won't see it but once it dries you will so even though it's kind of a pain to do a second coat of paint you're going to want to so i'm getting through my second coat here and i never talked about the right way to apply paint with your roller so you want to go kind of in an up and down motion like this and kind of overlap the other places you've already been and fill in the blanks. And the important part here, after you do it a few times, is occasionally you're gonna see some lap marks. Like you could see some over here where the paint's just sticking up a little bit or some things that go sideways or this way. So what I like to do is just to go over each area gently, pull your roller down and it kind of flattens everything out. Don't go too hard, it'll just recreate those marks. But if you go gently over it, it flattens them down and when it dries, you won't see those and they just miraculously disappear. Okay, so we are all finished. And as you can see, we still have the tape up. So the next step now is to just take your tape down. You should be left with some nice, clean, smooth lines. I'll give you a shot at what that looks like. At all our tape down and as you can see, it left nice, clean, straight lines everywhere. That is the beauty of the frog tape. So I would encourage you to use that if you can. It does a really nice job of keeping things uh, nice and straight. So now that we're all finished we just put our shelving back on and here I'm going to start with these wide ones first. Uh, just to make sure they're out of the way before we get into the smaller ones in the middle. So first step is to lay these back in and make sure the back lines up with our little slots. And then before, when we just push these up, all you have to do is push them down. That's it. So now we have to put in these little wire shelves and the way you do this is kind of the reverse of what you did before. So first thing you want to do is put these back in and you just push them in. And then with these, you put these underneath and put that in. You have to make sure they're lined up with the, the wire because these two tabs go right in between them. And then you do the same thing on this side. Sorry if my head just got in the way. Oh my gosh. There we go. And you just do those, do the same thing for the other ones. And you might want to tighten these up. There's some screws in here. And if you ran into them when you're painting, it's probably just a wise idea to tighten them up just to make sure everything's secure. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like.